Hi, my name is Dana. I'm the editor-in-chief of the teen-led Just Allergy Things magazine. The other team members and I at the Just Allergy Things magazine decided to start our podcast to spread food allergy education to a greater audience. With this podcast, we aim to share our experience with food allergies and give advice, comfort, and support to those who have food allergies or to those who want to learn more about the cause. We also hope to shed light on the invisible impacts of living with food allergies and expose them to the non-allergic population. So, whether you have food allergies or not, we hope that you join us on our journey of spreading food allergy awareness. Hi everyone, in this episode I chat with Rachel, Anthony, and Lauren about all things summer and food allergies. We talk about various topics concerning how we manage our food allergies during the summer. We cover everything from the 4th of July to family gatherings to friends to how we keep our EpiPens cool in the summer heat. We also discuss how food allergies factor into our summer vacations. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, I'm Dana. I'm 15. I'm allergic to all nuts, fish, sesame, and a few other things. Hi, my name's Rachel. I'm 17 years old from Chicago, and I'm allergic to all nuts. Hi, my name is Anthony Griffo. I'm 16 years old, and I'm allergic to all tree nuts. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm 16, and I'm allergic to dairy, egg, and kiwi. So, uh, Rachel and Anthony, since you're new on the podcast, um, what was your food allergy diagnosing story? Um, so I was either four or six years old. I'm not exactly sure how old I was. Um, but believe it or not, it was Christmas Eve. Um, I was baking a cake with my cousin. It was a walnut cake or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. We were cooking it at the time. I didn't have any allergies because we never really looked into it. But then all of a sudden, my eyes were itchy, and then my left eye puffed up, so I couldn't see at all, really, out of my left eye. Then, luckily, I was at my one cousin's house that has allergies. They knew right away what to do. They didn't give me an EpiPen because they didn't know if it was my allergy or not, so they gave me Benadryl, all the regular stuff. Then the next day on Christmas Day my right eye blew up. So I could barely see out of both eyes. Um, Luckily, though, this was a mild um, case of reactions, but it was still one of the first reactions I ever had and the only reaction I had. Um, But before this, whenever I did have um, an almond, I think it was, I would throw up and we never really realized that it was the almond until this scenario and then we got checked out but recently I'm not allergic to almonds as much as I am as I was which is a good thing so I'm starting to uh, grow out of my allergies that's really lucky my story is not as interesting but um my brother was like very allergic when he was little and so he had he outgrew a lot of his allergies but he was allergic to a lot of the same things as you Lauren he was kind of allergic to like most things. And so when I was seven, my parents took me to get scratch tested just to see since they are genetic. And so we kind of had a feeling. And I mean, I did test positive to all the nuts, but I never really ate any of them growing up because they were, they were never in my house, just out of respect for my brother, since he never could eat anything or even be around them. So I just got scratch tested, but we never really knew the severity of my allergy since I was always never around them. So when I was on vacation one year in California, we were at like a breakfast and it was like kind of like a buffet thing, but everything was labeled with allergy cards, like contains gluten, contains nuts. And there was like a muffin. It was a gluten-free chocolate muffin. Didn't say anything, but when everything else did. So I thought I was fine. I was eating it and there was something crunchy, but I just thought it was a chocolate chip. But then my mom tried it and was like, Rachel, like, this is not a chocolate chip. This is a walnut, but this was the first time I've ever had it. So we weren't really sure how I was going to react. And so turns out I was very allergic. I was, you know, all the regular symptoms, hives, throat swelling, everything, but EpiPens were on recall that year. So I couldn't use my EpiPens. So instead we went to the hospital. I took a lot of Benadryl and we went to the hospital and then they gave it to me through an IV. Oh, that's really scary. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you.
Yeah, that's really scary. I'm very lucky that I didn't have a uh, severe reaction to my first one. Um, but I am pretty happy, though, that I am starting to grow out of my allergies now. Yeah. So do you guys think managing food allergies during the summer is easier or harder than during the school year? Um, I think that it's harder mainly because during the school year, you know that you're going to school every day and you have your set plan. But in the summer, the plans are more spontaneous. So it gives less time to plan out like what I'm going to eat, what kind of food's going to be around me. So it can add a little bit more stress. Yeah, I would say during the school year, it's a little harder just because I feel like I have more control over what I do during the day during the summer. Um, I'm not set to a set schedule or anything. And like I can eat lunch from home every day with no issues. So that's probably a little bit easier for me. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree with that. Um, And I think the summer is probably a little harder just because you're like doing new things and you don't always like know exactly what you're going to do or um, how you're going to eat and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree with you guys on that. Because like, whenever I go to eat something, I always have to make sure I read it and I'm not allergic to it. Yeah, so um, I know during the summer, people are usually gathering with their families. How do family gatherings make you guys feel like are your extended family good with your food allergies? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's different because my cousin also has a similar allergy. Um, So we we have the same allergy so they know to stay away from nuts and stuff like that yeah similar to anthony my brother and my dad are also allergic to nuts so when we go to places if the other people aren't allergic since there's three of us usually the host will be more like cognizant of everything since there's more people that are affected um i think it's pretty hard for me like it's not my family making it hard it's just kind of the situation is kind of stressful sometimes like you have to ask people like can you wash your hands and like like don't like kiss you on the cheek or anything like family members so it can be kind of stressful but um they're really good about it like doing their best to make it better yeah like um I know my cousins usually visit during the summer so whenever like my family comes to visit they always stay at my house and they're usually really good about my allergies. They typically like cut out everything I'm allergic to. So that's always very nice of them. Um, and then when I go to someone else's house to stay, like I always go to my aunt's house in New York. Um, she usually doesn't eat things that I'm allergic to, but if she does, uh, she just knows to keep her distance when she is. And if she can like eat it when I'm out of the house. So yeah, my family is usually pretty good about it. So what are some summer activities that are hard to take part in with food allergies? I think for me, probably the hardest thing is just how last minute the plans are made. Because my friends, like during the school year, it's like we'll plan ahead for the weekend that we're going to go out to dinner or something. But in the summer, it could be really last minute. And so it's kind of hard with my just anxiety that I get around my allergies to last minute go out to a restaurant or just be hanging out and go get like ice cream and see the nut flavors everywhere and just like the little stuff like that I think builds up to all the anxiety around it and it's just hard to plan ahead and I like to do that to kind of keep up so that the anxiety doesn't get ahead of me. Yeah I agree summer is usually pretty spontaneous like especially with friends and plans so things can be scheduled in a minute and canceled the next so you really have to be on your toes and that can definitely be stressful with food allergies. In those types of situations, if I ever go out to like a restaurant with friends, I always just make sure to call if I can. And then um, if I can, I could also like bring my food if we're going to someone's house or something like that. Um, I usually try to like pick places that I could like bring my own food naturally, like if we were to go like ice skating or something like that. And like some activities that are usually kind of hard during the summer um, would probably be like anything having to do with food, like maybe like sleepovers could definitely be difficult or like parties in general, or also like eating out at restaurants, like during the summer in general. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I actually don't eat at restaurants at all. But when we do go, it is stressful and gives me a lot of anxiety just because there's food all around me that I can't eat. And then like, there's people sitting at the table, stuff I can't eat either. But yeah, I think that would be the hardest thing for me. Yeah, going out to dinner is definitely hard. But I do only eat at the places I know I'm safe at. 
Um, so like Fridays, Applebee's, I know I'm safe there because they actually have a allergy menu. So like, if you just look it up online or just ask one of the waiters, they'll give you a whole menu and a, a list of allergies and the ones you can't have and the ones you can't have. Oh, that's really interesting. I'll have to go to Applebee's to try that out. I've never been. Also like one of those like uh, chain type of places that were usually good with my allergies. It's actually Chili's. I only went once like at an airport because there was nowhere else to eat, but they were actually like surprisingly good with my allergies. I only went to Chili's once, but they were they were good with my allergy when I told them. Yeah. So like on the flip side, what are some summer activities that are easy to take part in with food allergies? I think um, COVID has actually made this easier because now that we're doing things like outside a lot, you don't really have to worry about going into someone's house. I mean, like as much at least um, and like not knowing what you're touching, like um, what food residue is on that. But we've been doing a lot of things outside, just like taking walks and stuff like that, which has been really easy for allergies. I know for me and my friends in our town, there's not really like much to do. Like we're always so bored. So a lot of times we'll just drive around and listen to music with like the windows down. And honestly, that's so nice because it's like if we get food, like I'm it's like very open about where we're going. And it's not like we have to go to this one place, which makes it a lot easier because it's not like you have to find something to eat at this one place. Yeah, I agree with that. It's it is hard, though, eating outside with a whole bunch of friends at dinner. Um, but I always just make sure the wait, waiter knows or whoever's dealing with my food that the chef knows. That's one thing I always make sure when I'm out at dinner. Yeah, I feel like driving and just like doing whatever with friends could be a lot easier. But I feel like also when you're like driving with friends, like you'll usually, especially if you're not like near much, you might just like end up going to like a chain or like fast food restaurant but I've never really had much success with fast food, like with my personal allergies, maybe like some McDonald's French fries, but that's about it for me. Um, can you guys like eat any type of fast food with your allergies? Yeah, I mean, I eat fast food all the time. I have Wendy's, McDonald's, Taco Bell. I have everything. Mainly for me, just because I'm only allergic to nuts, the only one I really have to avoid is Chick-fil-A since they cook in peanut oil. But other than that, I know for my brother, he's also allergic to nut sesame shellfish. And I know that it's really hard for him, especially with the sesame, because a lot of fast food restaurant workers aren't really educated on like where traces of sesame could be. And like, it's so dangerous because even just like a sesame oil that you wouldn't even notice could be life threatening. And so that can make it really hard when you're going to a place where the workers aren't as educated on what's going into the food. Yeah, I feel like with fast food, like you have to find like one thing that's like has no chance of being like cross contaminated or safe. Like for me, like I said, that's French fries. There's almost like no like chance for me. Um, but of course, you still have to be safe. But um, I remember once when I tried to venture out when I was little and I didn't really worry about food allergies. I had um, I had a McDonald's hamburger, but like I asked for it with no bun but they put mustard on it still and I'm sensitive to mustard. So that was kind of upsetting. So you have to make sure that whenever you go to a fast food place, like there's no risk of anything happening to it. And you have to just speak with the workers and make sure that they fully understand what you're allergic to. And then going back to summer activities that are easier to take part in with food allergies, mainly like Lauren said, anything like outdoors and like where people usually bring their own food, like maybe like going to the pool or even like kayaking. That's always fun. Going to the beach, basically anything that doesn't relate with food um, is always pretty good for me and food allergies. So do you guys do anything special to keep your EpiPen away from the heat? I really don't. I just keep it in my bag and then I go hang out with friends. I just, I don't do much with it. I have like a insulator pack that I keep it in. And then I also keep it in one of those EpiPen, like like it looks like a pencil case kind of. And then I have that in my bag. <laughs> so mine stays pretty cool. <laughs> I try my best to also do the same. I have the EpiPen pouch and I just try and keep it cool. And if I'm at like my friend's house, I'll ask to leave my bag inside or just little things like that. It's a little bit difficult sometimes with it being in the car because with my like interior being black, it heats up a lot in the car. 
So I always try and keep it out of the car. So even if I'm just running into the store, I'll make sure to carry it in because leaving it in the car for even an hour could just be like too much heat on a hot day. Yeah, I live in Florida, so it's always extreme heat here, especially in a hot car. But I always try my best if I am in a car with my EpiPen, just to make sure that the car is always on with the air conditioning. And if not, like keep the windows open. Obviously, when you're not in the car, don't keep your windows open. But if you are, then yeah, make sure it's cool. But um, I don't use anything special. I keep it in a pouch. I always make sure that my EpiPen like stays at room temperature and out of the extreme heat. But I've actually like been researching insulated EpiPen holders. I would recommend if you're interested in having some extra protection from the heat. Uh, the three uh, insulated EpiPen holders I was looking at that would be great to have would be the Back to Basics inhaler EpiPen carrying case, which you could get on Amazon. Some insulated carrying bags, which you could get on allergylifestyle.com and the Alertwear insulated waste pouch, which you could get on Etsy. So those are some cool ones if you're looking for that extra protection. So me and my brother, funny enough, we're actually in the middle of creating a new EpiPen case because all the ones on the market are really bulky, really like obvious that it's an EpiPen case. So we're kind of, we're still in the prototype phase, but we've been building a website and stuff for a new company. And we're going to be making like a slimmer, more under the radar case that's insulated. So once that comes out, I'll be happy to share that with everyone. We're very excited about it. That's really cool. How long have you been working on that? We've been working on it for about a month. It's really difficult with COVID because when we reached out to manufacturers, everything is so backordered that like to get a prototype was going to be like two to three months. And so we've been trying to find different ways to kind of get ahead, but it's been taking a long time, but we've been doing a lot of research and kind of comparing because when you see everything on the market, all the cases kind of look like they're catered towards like younger children. Like they're all very bright colored, very big so that they don't lose it. So like, especially for me, like I don't really like being very obvious that I'm carrying, you know, all these EpiPens and like, I don't want to draw attention to my allergies. So we're trying to do something like more slim, discreet, so that like people like us teenagers can be more comfortable carrying around their EpiPen. That's actually a great idea because I literally just keep mine in a Ziploc bag with some Benadryl, um, which I know shouldn't is not the best thing to do. Um, but like you said, I don't like to have it in the big bulky cases, the bright colors. I don't like that. So that's really good. I would definitely make that purchase. Yeah, definitely. I always keep mine in like a discreet like little pouch, but it'd be really cool if that like pouch type thing could be insulated. So it's really cool that you're working on that. Thank you. I'll keep you updated on it. Yeah. So transitioning into summer and the 4th of July, what do you usually do for the 4th of July and how do your food allergies play into it? So I usually um, go to like the beach since I live in Florida. And um, usually um, we have like a little beach type of a party with friends, or sometimes we could go to like an outdoor party at like in a friend's backyard. For that type of thing, uh, we always try to like go to a close friend's house who know about my allergies if we do end up going to a house. And uh, we always ask about the food and they're usually pretty good. Of course, there's always something in the back of your mind that maybe they didn't take cross contamination into account. But um, I always try to eat if I know it's safe and I feel comfortable doing it but if we go to the beach I always just like bring a sandwich and a cooler and some chips stuff like that I would always like bring my own food if we go to the beach like most people do so that's usually pretty good every summer I'm usually at overnight camp and lucky enough it's a coincidentally a nut free camp So it's been really nice on the 4th of July because, you know, we have the bakers, we have the chefs, but everything is always not free. Like they're really good about it. So like I've been able to be very lucky and just kind of eat freely and not really be too worried about what's there because I know it's all not free. What's the name of the camp? It's called Chippewa. It's in like northern Wisconsin. It's always been not free. Like that wasn't even originally the reason I picked it. It just kind of happened to be a coincidence. And it was great for me because all the snacks they give out, all the food they make, like they were always very cognizant of it. Yeah, actually, I go to I used to go to a camp here on Long Island and it was also not free, too, which was really great. So I didn't have to worry about any of that. 
Yeah, um, that's really cool. We don't really do much for the 4th of July. We've gone to like a few like cookouts and stuff. And usually I just stay away from any steaming food and I just bring my own snacks to eat. Yeah, same here, pretty much. Yes, me too. Um, if I'm going to like a barbecue 4th of July party, I'm usually okay. I just need to stay away from the buns and um, make sure they're not using any a weird type of barbecue sauce because that always can contain lots of allergens that you're unaware of. So I always check every label and make sure, ask if their grill was clean, make sure there's no like previous fish residue or something like that. Um, yeah, so I'm usually pretty good with grilled um, barbecue 4th of July parties. Um, so speaking of, is 4th of July food safe for you? And can you usually eat the food at a 4th of July party? I think generally for me, all the 4th of July things I've been to, usually the barbecue type food is okay with me with the nuts because usually I don't really have to worry if it's being grilled. I don't have to worry about peanut oil in the fryer or anything like that. And also with the desserts, usually like I won't be sure about all the baked goods, but they usually have like some sort of like fruit, like watermelon or something like that. I feel like that's very like summery 4th of July. So that's always really nice for me because personally I can eat all fruits so that's a good alternative when I can't eat any of the baked goods yeah for my dairy allergy it makes it really hard to eat anything that someone makes for me just because of cross-contamination like whatever they use to make the food most likely had dairy on it so I usually just like eat before and just bring snacks I don't really eat what other people would make at parties yeah we really don't go out that much for the fourth July. we mainly stay home so I, it doesn't really bother me as much with the food on 4th of July. Yeah, I know things have changed a lot, obviously, with, like, uh, what you're going to, like, do for the 4th of July and, like, COVID and stuff like that. So what are your current plans for the 4th of July? Right now, I'm just staying home for the 4th of July. <laughs> I don't really have any plans right now. Yeah, same here. I'm going to be staying home, taking care of my dog, who's scared of fireworks. So I'll be doing that. What kind of dog yeah. do you have? Oh, I have a little Havanese. Oh, that's so cute. That I have so two cute. Dotsons, and they both are terrified of fireworks. <laughs> I want a dog so bad, but I'm allergic. Yeah, same but, thing. but yeah, we're just going to go see fireworks, I think, tomorrow night. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I'll probably just be doing something chill, just probably going to the beach, maybe catch fireworks at night. A lot of places near us canceled fireworks just with COVID and everything. So we're trying to see if a town near us is still going to do fireworks. Yeah, Lauren, you said that you were allergic to dogs. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to dogs too, because whenever I go like near a dog with, I forget the difference between hair and fur, um, with like fur, I think it's called, um, I always get like watery eyes, and, like itchy, sometimes hives. So, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to dogs, but my dog, um, I am still kind of sensitive to her, which is kind of sad. But like if she I, she doesn't like my face because if she does, she gives me hives. Um, but it's still fun. I still pet her and everything. But she's actually hypoallergenic. So that's pretty good. She has hair. I want to say that's what it's called. Um, so um, she doesn't shed or anything. So that's really cool. And I didn't even get her with that intent. It was just a coincidence. So if you're looking for a good um, allergy-friendly dog, Havanese's are amazing. Yeah, Dodson's are actually, depend on uh, Dodson's are hyperallergenic as well. My long-haired Dodson, he is. Yeah, I don't know why, but I still get bothered around hypoallergenic dogs, so. No, so do I. I talk to my allergist. It's because it's probably the same with you. I'm allergic to like their saliva, so even if they are hypoallergenic so they just it just means they don't shed I'm still like allergic like even being around a hypoallergenic I get highs my eyes get like swollen so sad I just want a dog so I know like, that's interesting that's probably that's probably my case too yeah that's like yeah same my thing brother with my, yeah same thing with my sister she's gets the saliva reaction as well if the dog licks her yeah, same with me and my dog, but I still love her. Sometimes it could also be like, I remember that um, my cousin had a dog and he would always feed her peanut treats. And like, if the dog licked me, as you could probably assume, I would get like terrible hives and I would have to wash my hands immediately. But I always make sure that my dog eats food that I'm 100% like 
that's 100% safe with me. Like we always make her food at home um, and give her like just um, chicken jerky that I know is safe. So I think that might help a little bit like with me personally and her not giving me like too bad of like a reaction if she like licks me or something. Um, Does anyone have any travel plans for the summer? I'm actually, I just got back. I've been doing college visits. Um, so I've been trying to take advantage of that. So I just got back from Miami. I was looking at University of Miami and I actually leave tomorrow going on a trip for my friend's birthday. So it's definitely been a little bit of a challenge just because the planes, everything's so delayed. So it's kind of hard because they're not cleaning the planes as well in between. I've noticed I'll find a lot of nuts on the floor. Like it's just very... You have to be very careful when you're doing it. So me and my mom always pre-board the plane and we wipe down all the seats, the tray table, kind of everything around us. And then we'll ask the people in our row if they could just restrain from eating any nuts. And we offer to buy them like a different snack on the plane just to make sure that I can stay as safe as possible. Because the last thing I'd want is to have a reaction when I'm like hundreds of (laughs) miles away. Yeah, that's really funny. You're just in Miami. I live really near there. Um, And my grandma actually went to the University of Miami. So it's really cool there. So if you do end up going there, I'm sure you'll love it. Um, I loved it. The campus is so pretty. And they're really good with allergies there. They have a whole allergy section of the kitchen. I talked to the chef about the allergies and they're like very, very good about it. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. For traveling, what what plane line do you guys usually use? Like I know JetBlue is always amazing with my allergies and any other airline I've ever flew with have has never been the same like I flew with like American and like um I want to say a couple others but um they definitely did not compare to JetBlue's allergy policy yeah I mean I haven't flown in like 10 years or so but the company I flew with last time was JetBlue and they were really good with all my allergies and stuff so I usually fly American and they've gotten a lot better I will say but in the past I've had a lot of issues with them my whole family has just had with them not being very nice. They won't always let us pre-board and just kind of stuff like that. But lately, they've been like very good about it. Yeah, I also haven't been on a plane in like 10 years. So I have no idea what we flew with. Yeah, so um, going back to travel plans for the summer, I'm actually going to a place near Naples, Florida um, in a couple weeks. For my food allergies, we're just gonna like rent a house and like buy all our food. So um, that's how I kind of plan my vacation around my food allergies, just to make sure that I'm safe. So what's your most memorable um, summer vacation you guys have ever had? I would say either Texas. I went to Texas. This was actually the last time I uh, flew on an airplane was Texas. (laughs) Um, But it was for my cousin's wedding. So that I definitely be uh, one of them. And the other one I would say is Montauk on Long Island. Even though I'm on Long Island, this was like the end of Long Island. So it was pretty cool to see um, all of Long Island pretty much. And then like, it was very relaxing too down there. Um, For me, I know I've mentioned this in a previous podcast. I go to New York every summer, not the past summer and not this summer, Um, but it's always really fun there. And Like I said before in a previous podcast, New York is always amazing with food allergies and it's just fun going around the city and also uh, being in upstate New York with family. It's always amazing up there. The city is a little harder, though, um, than Long Island because they sell stuff on the side streets and a lot of times it's with nuts. So whenever we see like those carts, we try and like move away from it so I don't touch anything on the floor or stuff like that because it is scary when it comes to that um if you guys ever get the chance or just to anyone listening um chicago there's a lot of restaurants that are really really good with allergies so for me it's not really a vacation but to a lot of people it could be i'm about like a 25 minute drive downtown so it's really easy to go down there and there's a chain of restaurants called let us entertain you that's kind of the overall and they have like hundreds of restaurants in it and if you like tell them they have, you have an allergy, they fill out a whole allergy ticket. Sometimes the chef will come talk to me about it. They put like a little toothpick that says allergy on it, like in it. So like you can be very reassured 
that everything you're eating is safe and it's been checked by a lot of people. That's awesome. I think my favorite vacation we went on was probably Ocean City, Maryland, which was really cool. And it was just like every other vacation, we just brought all of my food and went to the grocery stores there. Yeah, Ocean City was good. I was there one time. They were really nice with all the food allergies and stuff. Yeah. And Anthony, I heard you mention like nut carts. I actually had like a pretty bad experience with one because um, I used to play like competitive, like volleyball, club volleyball. And um, we would play at these convention centers and there would be tons of vendors um, lining the courts. And one of them was like a nut roaster vendor. And they were like roasting the nuts while we were playing. And it smelled like cinnamon. And at first I thought like, oh, that smells really good. And then I realized that it was from the nut vendor. And I got so anxious, like during my game. And that was just a bad experience with a nut vendor. So you always have to be careful around those. Yeah, that's what they do in a city. They roast the, all the nuts on the streets. Yeah, my brother's like borderline airborne and like the smells like make him really, really nauseous. And like we were walking and like he got so nauseous just from walking by it for like 30 seconds. Yeah, my allergy is not that bad, but we currently don't know exactly what it could do to me. So it could be life threatening and we it could not be life threatening. So we really don't know. Yeah. So what do you guys usually do in terms of travel in non-COVID times in terms of food allergies? Like I always just try to do a normal vacation like as close as I can. So I just go to restaurants and I make sure to call ahead just like you normally would. That's usually what I do. Do you guys like bring your own food or stay with family or what do you do? It really depends on trip. So like when we do a road trip, um, we'll bring food, but we'll also go out to dinner. Um, but like when we go out to dinner, I'll do what I normally do when I go out to my friends. I'll ask the waiter and then I'll tell them to warn the chef and then stuff like that. Um, I usually, we usually fly. We don't do many road trips, but what we'll do is on these like reservation apps that have like hundreds and hundreds of restaurants that you can just like kind of a service to help you make the reservations. An option that they've added recently is a place for any allergies where you can list them so that when your chef, I mean, not your chef, sorry, your waiter, when your waiter comes to the table, they already know about all of your allergies. So I didn't even know that my mom had done this. And we went to a restaurant like three days ago and I was giving my usual spiel to the waiter. Like I have a nut allergy. He's like, oh yeah, I already have it marked down. I've already talked to the chef because it was already in the reservation which has been really helpful. And it's like a lot of restaurants are on these reservation apps now. So it's been, it's taken off a lot of anxiety because they're like informed ahead of time. Yeah, like I said, we don't go to any restaurants. So we just have the cooler that we bring with all of my food and then we just go to the grocery stores. Yeah, that's really cool, Rachel, about the reservation thing. I'll definitely check that out and see what I could do with that because that sounds really good. There's a lot of Florida restaurants on it, too, because when I was down there, like there are so many, probably ones you didn't even realize because you're probably so used to calling. But there's a lot of places on there. So um, what's your favorite summer food that you enjoy eating? Mine is probably watermelon because you can eat so much of it (laughs) and it's so refreshing. And like it's usually like most people can eat it since it's so water-based so I really like it same here I love watermelon I think mine is strawberries we've gone like strawberry picking a few times and they're just so good like the fresh ones I've always wanted to go strawberry picking it seems so much fun it is you should yeah I would say for mine is either watermelon or cantaloupe because I really like cantaloupe a lot yeah cantaloupe's always really good have you guys ever like tried prosciutto like wrapped around cantaloupe I know that's like kind of like a fancy thing but like I always do it sometimes when I I, there's a coincidence I have both cantaloupe and prosciutto but it's always like surprisingly good have you guys ever tried that I've never tried it no I don't think if you ever heard of that (laughs) oh really if you ever happen to have those two they they make a surprisingly good food combination thank you guys so much for joining me on the podcast thank you for having us Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you want to support Just Allergy Things mission in promoting food allergy awareness, you can follow us at Just Allergy Things on Instagram. And make sure to check out the Just Allergy Things magazine on justallergythings.com. Thank you again for listening, and until next time, bye!